Lesson 23, Jesus Condemns the Pharisees. In today's lesson, we will learn about Jesus' condemnation of the proud Pharisees. We can learn well from this lesson, since there are still many people like the Pharisees with us today. When Jesus spoke to the crowds about the Pharisees, he speaks openly against them because of their hypocrisy. He points out how they teach the truth and righteousness, but they do not do what they teach. They give burdens to men that they themselves are not willing to carry. Jesus says they sit in Moses' seat, that is the place of spiritual leaders over the people judging according to the law. The Jewish people were to obey these teachers if they were teaching God's truth, but not to follow their poor example. Jesus shows how the Pharisees were hypocrites in their words and in their works, and how they loved the praise of men. They were proud of their religious clothing, wanting the best seats in the synagogue and to be called rabbi. This same spirit of pride is still with us in the church today, for we see pastors trying to impress with their nice attire or looking for positions of honor in the church, and they love to take titles like reverend or pastor. Jesus clearly said this was wrong and that the greatest was to be the servant. We should not seek to have privilege and honor for ourselves taking special titles. The apostles called themselves slaves and servants and when referring to their apostleship they did not treat it as a title of honor but a service to render. They were God's messengers sent to proclaim the gospel. That is what the work of the apostle was. It was not intended as a prestigious title of honor, as men are doing today and seeking their own honor. There are many areas of hypocrisy which the Lord condemned in the Pharisees, such as blocking the road to heaven, taking advantage of poor widows, making long public prayers, making their converts worse than they were before, and swearing by the temple and altar. Here we notice the character of religious hypocrisy, which takes advantage of poor people, robbing them of their resources. They also like to show how spiritual they are by their long prayers. Some put on a good spiritual show and convince everybody what a great man of God they are, and yet all they are motivated by is the love of money, and they willingly take from the poor and gullible. They should not have been swearing or taking oaths by anything, whether temple uh, or the God who dwelt in the temple, neither the altar or the gift on the altar. They should let their words be true and perform what they say without taking oaths. They were straining a gnat, a very tiny insect, and swallowing a camel. They were so busy thinking about minute details of religion that they did not see how they had neglected the larger and more important issues like honesty, justice, and mercy. Jesus describes them as cups that are clean on the outside, but inside are filthy. Their hearts were filthy like a decaying corpse in a grave. The outside might look beautiful, but inside they were filled with extortion and self-indulgence. The phony face of false spirituality can fool many people, but it will never fool God and some day will meet with his severe wrath and judgment. Jesus tells the Pharisees to fill up on their guilt and this speaks of God's coming judgment on them, knowing the course of destruction they were on. He calls them a bunch of snakes and questions how they will escape from their path leading to hell. He says they have killed, crucified, and scourged God's messengers, and they were guilty of all the innocent blood that had been shed from the time of Abel to Zechariah, that is the entire Old Testament period. Both Abel and Zechariah were murdered by their brethren. This strong rebuke and condemnation of the Pharisees should teach us how much God hates religious hypocrisy. 
There are still many hypocrites in the church today, and we can easily identify them as they go about in all their pride, drawing attention to themselves and how spiritual they think they are, wearing clothing to impress others, and praying and preaching in ways to show off before men. But it is all rotting bones and putrid in God's sight. Some day God will bring down heaven's judgment on the men who have used religion to boost their own egos, fill their own pockets, and bask in the praise and honor of men. A godly man is a humble man who is interested in helping and serving others, not himself. He serves the poor and does not steal from them. He does not make a show out of his knowledge, prayers, or giving, but uses whatever God has given to him in order to serve the needs of those around him, and he chooses to do so with a heart of love for God and not from a heart of self-indulgence and covetousness. It is remarkable that Jesus spoke these words so freely and publicly. Undoubtedly, some of the Pharisees heard these things and it made their anger rage against Jesus. Jesus spoke the truth, knowing it would incite their anger and inevitably bring about his execution. He spoke because the truth needed to be said and the hypocrisy needed to be confronted. They should have humbly repented, but instead they set themselves on a course to kill Jesus because of his harsh condemnation of them. Sometimes the truth is very painful, but the wise and humble will learn by correction, but the proud and foolish man will never accept a rebuke. There are times we need to be courageous to confront the evil in others, even though it may be costly to us, because righteousness and God's honor should be defended by those who love God. But you do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Matthew chapter 23 verse 14